let's talk about data components and item stacks. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're coming back into a little bit more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the newly added data components, which, which are basically a new way of storing data on item stacks. And those are actually very, very cool. So we'll see this by what we're going to do is on our chisel item, every time we right click a block and actually change this, what I wanted to do is I want to save the coordinates of that particular block on the item stack, right on the chisel stack that we have and then display it via the append hover text method. For this, we'll actually register a custom data component. It is super simple and you'll see. So in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called component. So for this, in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called component. And then inside there, we'll make one new Java class, which is going to be the mod data component types. There we go. And this is going to have a public static final. What is it? Of course, a deferred register of type data component type of type question mark data underscore component underscore types equal to deferred register dot create and then forward and then and then registries dot data component type and then tutorial mod dot mod id as the second parameter. Now always of course all of the code is also available down below so no worries there at all. I'm also going to add the register method right here with the event bus and that's going to be data components that register passing in that event bus over here. So the normal thing that we have for every deferred register and that's just call this as well mod data component types dot register passing in that mod event bus and there we go. And then we need a register method, a helper method. So this is going to look quite, quite crazy. Once again, the code is available down below. So you might need it here because this is going to be a private static angled bracket uppercase T that's going to return a registry object of type data component type of type T. This is going to be the register method. No, this is going to be the register method passing in a string name parameter and then passing in a unary operator of type data component type data component type dot builder of type T. I'm going to call this the builder builder operator. And then the method itself is going to return data component types dot register passing in the name parameter and then passing in a supplier as the second parameter of builder operator dot apply passing in data component type dot builder, this time the method over here, and then calling the build method right here and ending it with a semicolon. And this helper method is going to allow us to very easily register our custom data components. It's actually super simple. And the way that it's going to work is the data component is going to be a public static final registry object of type data component type of type. And here we need to define the type of data component we want to save. In our case, when we right click a block, we wanted to save the position. So in our case, it would be a block pause. Now, very importantly, and we'll see this in just a second, that's going to be called coordinates equal to the register method. So that's going to be coordinates as the name. And then the second parameter is going to be a builder. And then this is going to point to a to builder dot persistent passing in block pause dot codec. And that is what I mean when I say we're going to see this in a second. What's important is that when you choose the type of data you want to save, it has to have a codec associated with it because that is the way that the data components get serialized and deserialized. So that's how they get basically get turned into JSON files and saved on disk and stuff like that. And that is why this is so important. So you could, in theory, have any class inside of here as long as you have a codec that serializes and deserializes that class. That's basically the idea. Uh, now, what we can do is we can press shift twice and actually take a look at the data component, data component, component types, I believe. No, it is the data components then. Data components, Minecraft net, net Minecraft core components. There we go. And these are the data components from vanilla. You can actually see those very, very straightforward. There's like quite a few of them, actually. And one of them is the custom data, which we could also use. In our case, we're not going to use this, but you can use this as well. And what we do, what we can do is we can actually go into this control, left click on this, and we can see this literally uses a compound tag for its data. So that is why the basic NBT, you know, slash compound tag data is still sort of backwards compatible with the new system. The data component system is sort of backwards compatible with this. So that's really cool in my opinion. And Highly recommended to also check this out. You can also, of course, then see where this is all used. Highly recommended. But in this case, we basically have a completely custom data component. 
And let's see how we can now use this. Now you are going to see, be surprised because this is super simple. So in your custom chisel item over here, we need to use the item stack, right? So we're going to say pcontext.get item and stack. This is going to get us the item stack. We can hover over this. We can see this is the item stack. And here you simply want to call the set method passing in what data component we want to set mod data component types dot coordinates second coordinates dot get second parameter is going to be p context dot get click position and just with this we're going to set the da coordinates data component type to the value of the click position and that is now basically added to the item stack that's literally all that there's to it and to actually see this what we're going to do in the append hover text method is we're going to say if p stack dot get and then passing in mod data component types dot coordinates, right? If that dot get, if that is unequal to null, right? Because if we can actually take a look at this, control, control left click on the get method, you can see this is nullable, meaning that the value that we get out of this, if it is null, that means that there is no value uh, like saved in the coordinates data component on this particular stack. And if, if there is something on there though, then I'm going to say p component tooltip components dot add component dot literal i'm going to say last block changed at and then we're going to say p stack dot get mod data component types dot coordinates dot get and there we freaking go and with this we're now also getting the data comp like the actual coordinates that were saved via this one right we're getting that when we hover over the item stack really freaking cool in and you can of course in the set and the get method use any type of components so same with the data components from vanilla in theory right you can literally just like do that if you want to and you can also always see what is the type of data that you're going to get back so that's pretty interesting and if you want to reset the data so basically you're like i want to delete this literally just pass in a null over here not nil but null there you go and that's going to be fine because we can look at the set method here as well and we can see this is nullable basically meaning that if you pass a null then the data component is basically removed from that particular item stack but with this done that's literally all we need to do in this case and i guess let's just jump into the game and see if it works all right fans, so back in minecraft and you can see we got some chisels over here and if i right click with the second chisel let's say right if i hover over this now last block changed at minus 44 65 minus 104 and if i were to take another one and right click on another you can see those are completely different values because of course right this is a different item stack and we've clicked on a different block state that's the whole idea and we can do the same thing with these right and what we can also do is i can then override the already existing data because well that's just the way that it works right we're just overriding the data that already exists there so that is really freaking cool that is you know one thing about sort of item stacks and similar type of thing that we had with the blocks and the block states and now also custom data components very cool system and i think the new data components are actually really freaking cool and, and that's basically data components explained as always, of course, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial. Next time in this video, we're going to add custom tools to Minecraft. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.